afternoon everybody uh, and welcome back to Birmingham Wildlife Conservation Park for the latest in our Wednesday Facebook Live videos. Today we are in our nocturnal house as you can see um, by, the, by the red lighting um, and we're continuing our world tour with a stop off on the island of Luzon uh, in the Philippines to meet our northern Luzon giant cloud rats. Very appropriate name. Um, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, so yeah, feel free to send in any questions or comments you might have uh, throughout the video. Otherwise, I will just carry on um, talking to you about these guys. Right then, so yeah, uh, like I say, these guys are from um, the island of Luzon, which is one of the islands that makes up the Philippines. Um, and as their name suggests, they are from the north of Luzon. Um, yeah, the full name for, the full kind of common name for these guys is Northern Luzon Giant Cloud Rat, um, but we just generally call them the Cloud Rats. Hi Mary, hi Penny, hope you're all okay. So yeah, like I said, these guys are found on, uh, in the north of Luzon. Um, they're also found kind of in the central areas as well. Um, there is one other species in their the genus that, that these guys are in um and very imaginatively it is the southern luzon giant cloud rat um and it inhabits the, the southern half of the island um there is a little bit of a crossover between the two species in luzon uh, in that kind of central belt um and there is a little bit of taxonomic debate whether they're two separate species or if they're kind of subspecies of the same the same species uh, but for now they are classed as separate species um i believe the the southern species are a little bit smaller than these guys um and these guys kind of from kind of nose to nose to tail are um can get up to around about 75 centimeters long um so they are definitely very large rats hence the name uh giant cloud rat you can see their body shape um almost looks beaver like really um but but they are rats they are in the the mouse and rat family and as you can see they're very good climbers they spend a lot of time in the trees um got quite an arboreal lifestyle i will say you can obviously hear them eating and feeding i have to drop food in for them um this is just to keep them a little bit calm because they can be a little bit feisty sometimes Personally, touch wood, I've never had any issues. But if they do get a little bit feisty, we might have to make a retreat and um, I'll have to go around the public side. But so far, so good, which is what we like. Hi, Tim, hope you're okay. So yeah, they've got this quite distinctive look. They've got um, this kind of white gray fur um, with these kind of black patches around the eyes, around the nose and the muzzle um, and the ears. Um, and then their tail as well is actually covered in fur, um, which we'll try and get a view of on this one. So you can see a black tail with a little white tip. So yeah, their tail is completely covered in fur as well. Kind of unlike some of the some of the kind of more well-known mouse and rat species we get over here. They do have a bit of a kind of panda appearance with the, um, the markings on the face. little munch there at the moment so these guys eat a um kind of variety of plant matter out in the wild um like i say they're they're mainly arboreal living up in the trees so so kind of any any plant matter they can get their hands on they'll they'll eat um we give them a, a fairly varied range of, of vegetables and um and salad items and things like that um, and as you can well as you can tell they they rather rather enjoy it and a good little munch, which you should be able to hear actually, hopefully. Hear them having a bit of a munch. So these guys are um, found in forests. Um, they can be found up to quite high altitudes, which is I think where they get the name cloud rats. Um, being found in, in cloud forests as they are known. But yeah, 
mainly forest dwelling. And like I say, very adept climbers. They've got um, quite dexterous hands, which you can see there. Um, kind of very much like little people hands almost. Um, long fingers, able to grasp onto things quite well. Um, so yeah, they're um, they're really well well adapted for, for their arboreal lifestyle. That tail obviously gives them a bit of balance as well. Hello. And I came in here yesterday to try and get the, the photo to advertise the, the Facebook video. One of them did try to steal my phone, so we'll, we'll try not to let that happen today. So in here we've got um, three females. Uh, they are all, well, two of them are definitely sisters. The other one is probably also a sister of theirs, um, but their previous collection wasn't. 100% sure who um who mum and dad were so so yeah we believe they're all sisters uh, all from three different litters um so our oldest is uh coming up to four years old uh the other two are uh, kind of six months back um and then six months back again so so we've got you know a three-year-old and a couple of two-year-olds at the moment like I said, they're all sisters, all girls. Um, they came to us from Chester Zoo uh, and they've nearly been here for um, two years now. They arrived at the end of March 2021. Um, so yeah, they've they've been here for a little while now. Obviously, they're in our nocturnal house um, and they do mainly have an arbor uh, a nocturnal lifestyle. Um, generally sleeping throughout the day and then they um, and then they come out at night to go foraging it's just a lot safer for them to, to come out at night there's obviously lots of predators and things like that over in in their normal natural home and yeah they are actually classed as part of the rat family tim um the rat families well mice and rat family are all it's quite a wide-ranging one um from you know the the brown rats and the house mice and things like that that we get over here to to the cloud rats we've got here um Things like water rats in Australia. Um, even I think some of the... Um... No, I'm not actually going to say that because I think that's wrong. So I won't, <laughs> I won't carry on with that one. Um, but yeah, no, the rat family is quite, quite broad and, and, and got quite a few members in it. And these are definitely, definitely part of that family. So these guys are actually classed as uh, least concern in the wild. Um, they don't face too many threats. Um, usual deforestation and habitat loss, which I think every species is, is suffering from. Um, they are also seen as a pest species. They do eat crops and things like that out in the wild. Uh, so farmers will, um, farmers will kill, kill them um, to stop them eating their crops. Um, but other than that, they don't really face too many threats. So, so yeah, it's, um, hello, you're showing off. Oh, hello. See, told you they can get a bit feisty. We'll leave you alone with your bit of carrot. We'll come up here a little bit. Um, so yeah, they are only class of least concern. Well, they are a lovely species to have here. They're doing quite well in captivity now. Um, I've seen a number of collections starting to go into these guys um, and successful breeding and things like that as well um, at a number of other UK collections. Uh, so, so yeah, they are starting to, to do really well in captivity as well, which is good. Um, nice to be able to, to build up the, the safety net population, as we call it, um, here. So, so if in the future they're, they're needed to be released out into the wild, that can be done. They can get quite weighty as well. Like I say, the length can be up to about 75 centimetres, nose to tail. Um, they can weigh up to a couple of kilos as well, so they are definitely hefty little rats. Well, big rats, I should say. All right, stroppy. All right. You're getting a bit, a bit annoyed with me now, aren't you? 
you had your food and now you're telling me off. You can kind of see the different personalities of the three here as well. I um, I personally don't spend much time with these guys. It's only the third or fourth time I've actually been in here with them. But um, you can see we've got quite a confident one here. One kind of in the middle. And we've got one that's hidden itself behind the box there. Um, so you can see the different personalities. Which is always quite interesting to see. Especially considering they are all sisters. Got their own little hierarchy. Yeah, they're very noisy eaters, Tim. Very noisy. No table manners. All right then, guys. Feel free to send in any last-minute questions that you've got. Um, otherwise, we will leave them to it, because, like I say, I think I am outstaying my welcome slightly. And we'll leave them to eat in peace. Next up on the tour uh, for next week, um, well, I think we're going back to the reptile house and we'll probably have a look at our mangrove snake, I do believe is the, the next one on the list. Um, going back towards, um, not mainland Southeast Asia, but um, but yeah, kind of the southern tip of, of Southeast Asia. Um, we've kind of taken a bit of a detour northwards to the, the Philippine Islands um, this week. And then we'll kind of loop back down and round for the to the main area of, of Southeast Asia for next week. Although we may have thinking about it, we may have to have a little rethink. It's half term next week, so the reptile house may be quite busy. So maybe we'll do one of the other ones first and then come back to the mangrove snake. We'll see. We'll work it out for next week. We will work it out for next week. Yeah, they haven't discovered there's a, a bowl of food up that end, as we saw, but there's also a bowl of food up this end, which I don't think they've discovered yet, so we'll have to have a look in a minute. Right, are you being friendly or are you going to have a go? Bless them. They are lovely. Well then guys, I think we will call it a day there. Um, so thank you for tuning in to the latest stop on our world tour. Um, and yeah, we will be back same time, same place next week. Cheers guys. <laughs>